By the time winter starts closing in on the Gallipoli Peninsula, enthusiasm for the Allied campaign is cooling. Sleet and snow cover the hills. A storm floods dugouts and washes away trenches, spreading waterborne disease. Instead of suffering from the heat, soldiers suffer from frostbite. In November, the British Minister for War, Lord Kitchener, visits the peninsula to see for himself whether the troops should stay or go. The conditions there are more difficult than he had imagined. What to do? The War Committee in London deliberates. Finally, in December, Cabinet orders that the troops get out. For the first time at Gallipoli, an Australian will be in command. General Brudenell White oversees the evacuation. Soldiers slip away in boats at night. Stores are surreptitiously destroyed or removed, ammunition buried. Engineers are instructed to blow heavy guns to bits in explosions no louder than gunshots. The Anzacs leave behind dumps of tinned meat and biscuits. More than 8,000 Australians and more than 2,700 New Zealanders who have died in the fighting. At 4 a.m. on December 20, the last Anzac soldier slips away from Gallipoli. Within a couple of weeks, all British and French troops have also left Cape Helles. The Allied forces have battled on the peninsula for eight and a half months. More than 40,000 of their men have died. British, French, Indian, Canadian, soldiers from Nepal and Ceylon. The Turks have lost twice as many soldiers defending the invasion, more than 86,000 dead. Within months of sailing from Gallipoli, the first Anzacs arrive in Europe on March 7, 1916, where they will start fighting again. This time in the main theatre of World War I, the Western Front. <laughs> 